and my own thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi everybody, I'm Ian Harvey, massage therapist. I'm going to be showing you a bit about how to work with thoracic outlet syndrome, or just tingling in the fingers. You're going to get this with a lot of office workers and people who have to do a lot of things in front of their body repeatedly for long periods of time. So office workers, also uh, hairstylists, cosmetologists, things like that. Some people will have a formal diagnosis and it will be a stable condition in which case you can proceed as usual. Some people will not have a formal diagnosis. If people are having this strange nerve sensation, I do recommend that you uh, refer them to a doctor who will be able to formally diagnose them. So if you're working with someone with thoracic outlet syndrome symptoms, the likely sites of impingement are one, where the nerve plexus itself emerges from. So we're talking about C5 through T1. These emerge from this forest of scalene muscles and they twine together to become the brachial plexus. This brachial plexus continues on under this clavicle and then has to proceed through under this pectoralis minor until finally after going through this gauntlet of different stuff that can squish it finally goes down to innervate the arm. Most common symptoms are tingling, numbness, and even pain, usually with prolonged periods of that repetitive movement, or when they're laying on it. They will very often have arms that fall asleep for no good reason. For instance, if they use their arm for a pillow or if they just try to sleep. So, what can we do with this from, as always, a myofascial perspective? That's what I come from. If you were coming from a different perspective, you could apply pressure directly to the scalenes. You could apply pressure directly to the pectoralis minor, which we will be doing a bit of. But I feel like the scalenes are easily annoyed. We don't want these scalenes to become even more ticked off than they already are. They're in spasm, they are short, they are hypertonic and we would like to relieve that. There's not, we can't do everything here in this one session. Say if you see this person once a month, you're not going to be able to do everything for this person, so definitely um, encourage some self-treatment and some homework. And if you look at my other channel, I'll have a link where you can see my self, my, my client self-work for this stuff. So have a look. But. From my myofascial perspective, I don't want to just hit these scalenes. I don't want to just hit here, hit here. I want to free up this entire shoulder girdle and all of this neck apparatus. So that means coming up above where the impingement side is, going down below where the impingement side is, working with muscles that might not even be involved, like deltoids. All right, so start slow, warm up the muscles. Uh, I'm currently not using any sort of lotion or oil. Not necessarily necessary. I, I, I find that some people use a bit too much of that stuff. And the glide of the skin tends to be enough to keep you hooked in to that superficial fascia, which is continuous with the deep fascia. I'm starting with just some general strokes for trapezius. And my thumbs are coming around onto this anterior portion of where trapezius meets up with all of these other neck muscles. And I'm just giving some nice traction to this cervical fascia. I am truncating this a bit if I was to do a massage specifically for thoracic outlet syndrome, it might be as long as 20 minutes. My warm-up time would be a little bit longer. As always, think origin to insertion and beyond. We're not just working from one tendon to another. We're working far past. We're thinking of that fascia. So I'm not just going to stop at the occiput. I'm going to come up into the scalp a bit. So let's say that your client has 
that tingling and numbness on the right side. And that you'll probably find that that's a little more common because of mouse use and because that tends to be people's dominant hand. So they'll be using it for fine motor movement more often, they'll be hiking that shoulder more often, and stabilizing using these tiny muscles up here. So we're going to start with my favorite move, which is spreading laterally with an open hand, and spreading medially and superiorly with a soft fist. and take some easy deep breaths. So a lot of these anterior and lateral neck muscles are also muscles of inspiration, of breathing. So if I have my client breathe while I'm doing this technique, that's going to engage that fashion in a different way. Muscles are going to be sliding underneath my hand. If you're just out of massage school, my recommendations are if you're doing an open fist, I like my thumb out, just make sure not to jab them in the ear or the eye with it. And any time that you are applying pressure with a palm, you can always incorporate your fingertips a bit and always mold to the surface of the body. Now if I was seeing this client twice a week, this could be my entire treatment. This is enough to free up that fascia. If you're having difficulty emulating this move, notice how I have my elbow um, supporting me over here. It gives me some good leverage. Okay, so now that I've got all of this nice real estate exposed, I can do some unilateral Low petrissage. I can feel under my thumb this tight border of anterior trapezius where it rolls over on itself up here. As I work my way up onto the lateral neck, I can feel myself going over sternocleidomastoid and over levator scapula. And in here, you'll feel kind of a gu guitar string kind of sensation. Lots of little twangy muscles. And these are the scalenes. Like I said, this, these C5 through T1 nerves, they emerge through these scalenes. So if the scalenes are too tight, this is one area where they can get pinched. Just keep in mind that anytime you're working over here on the lateral or anterior neck, you might be pressing directly on those nerves. And if you've ever winged your funny bone on something, you know that uh, it's not a nice sensation. So with my fascial release, we're moving at an angle. My pressure is oblique, it's not straight down. If I were to press straight down, I could probably do some pretty good trigger point work in the scalenes, but this oblique pressure works with trigger points just fine, and it's less likely to put pressure directly on those nerves or any of this vasculature that's running through here. There's quite a heavy blood supply that runs right along with that brachial plexus. So all of this slow myofascial petrissage is doing a lot to, one, warm up and loosen up all of this fascia. 
But what if I want to get more into this anterior neck? What if I want to interact with these fascial sheets a little more directly? I'm going to use, it's going to be shaped like a fist, but I'm really using the flaps of these phalanges right here. I'm going to start with these flats and move into these flats. It's going to look a little something like this. Restraining the head with just a gentle hand. Applying pressure down toward the table, not so much in toward their neck. For some clients, this can feel um, uncomfortable. It can make the skin feel like it's being ripped off their body. So track your client's face. Most people, it's fine, and I actually love this sensation. A lot of people do. Moving into the flats of my proximal phalanges. And follow this down. I'm going to be moving off of the scalenes but we're still engaged in that fashion. This is just a variant of that move that I showed you earlier. that. Now what do you do if your client reports that tingling while you're doing this move? I recommend backing off a bit, using less pressure, and going slower. Ask your client, is that better? Has that receded a bit? And if not, you may need to go even more indirectly and work with structures that aren't quite so far onto the anterior neck for this session. For future sessions, you may be able to work more and more onto this anterior neck. Just some quick cautions. If you feel a heavy pulse, you have found your way to the carotid artery, which you've gone very interior, which there is some good stuff in there, but I ain't teaching you about that. So uh, you might want to take a CU course on working on things that are this far forward. You might feel some lymph nodes over here. I'm palpating one right now. Just slide right over them. If you are working broadly enough and obliquely enough, that lymph node is just going to not care. You're just going to glide right over it. It's going to be fine. Just don't think that this is a knot. Don't do that. All right. So we've warmed up this interior neck. And now I'm interested in following this brachial plexus as it dips under the clavicle. So I'm going to use the flat of this phalanx, slide it under this, cl this clavicle. I'm superior to the clavicle right now, and I'm allowing some of my pressure to go down toward her feet. But most of my pressure is going laterally. Again, think that oblique angle. Track your client's face. Make sure you're not causing any pain. While I'm continuing with this, with this move, let's talk about some more strategies you can use. We're going to work on pectoralis minor in a bit, but definitely think about pec major. Pec major and all of this fascia up here is pulling the shoulders inward and forward. The tighter that gets, the easier it is for impingement to happen. All right, let's work with this tissue just below the clavicle. As you follow the inferior aspect of the clavicle, as you follow it laterally, you're eventually going to come across this bump. So the coracoid process, 
This is the process that um, your cortical brachialis attaches to and your pectoralis minor. Pec minor is deep to pec major, so if we could scoop off her pec major, we'd be able to see it. It runs from this coracoid process down a few ribs and attaches onto those ribs. This is another muscle of inspiration, especially forced inspiration, <laughs> sniffing, or breathing really hard when you're running. So if you're noticing a theme here, yeah, all of these muscles, one, bring the head forward, bring the shoulders forward, and they're involved with chest breathing. People who are stressed out do a lot of chest breathing. So I'm doing a bit of a pin and stretch here. These fingers are contacting the coracoid process. These other fingers are gently gliding down that pec minor, making contact with all of those tenderness attachments. I like to occasionally slow down here and maybe stop completely. You can follow a trigger point chart to figure out where you should stop, or you can follow your intuition. Really, it's just nice to slow down on peg, and on peg minor sometimes. And some more easy breath. Now we're going to play with the angle of the shoulder a bit. Okay, so if I want to really free up this tissue, first of all, we've done a lot of good stuff up here. I think that that is where the likely impingement sites are, but I don't want to ignore everything else that attaches to this shoulder and that could potentially be helping with all of that forward and down tension. So let's get this shoulder joint moving a bit. Anytime that you work on, anytime that I work on the shoulder, I like to have a hand resting right here. Uh, if, if you have a good therapeutic relationship with your client, that shouldn't be a problem. Just make sure that this is within their comfort, comfort level. But with this arm here, anything that you do to the shoulder involves a little bit of movement at that shoulder. We're changing the angle as we work. So I'm going to cradle this shoulder, and I'm starting with just some nice mobilization. I'm not really sliding over skin, I'm doing some deep friction where I'm sliding skin over underlying structures. So we're freeing up that deltoid, freeing up that pectoralis major where it inserts onto the humerus. You can come back up onto the trapezius a bit and get some traction in there. If you really want to free up that trapezius, you can slide a thumb under its leading edge and unroll it just a little bit, coming up into the neck. Now just some more of that slow myofascial petrissage. My fingers are gliding. I know it looks slow. It is slow. But when your client gets up, all of this is just going to feel incredibly free. With this freedom, they need to start doing some stretching within their comfortable range of motion, getting them out of this kind of fetal position that we put ourselves in when we work at a computer. Every time you rock back and forth, you are changing just by 15 degrees or so what's happening in this joint capsule. And I will continue in this manner down the arm, free up 
all of these tissues, that brachial plexus continues and it branches off into its individual nerves. And if you can get the tissue around those nerves to be freed up, then that can only help. Okay, again, I'm going to work broadly. I'm not just going to work those sites where the impingement might be. I'm going to work up here. I'm going to work all down here. You can even work in the back some. Of course you can. Uh, just don't become too focused because that can be a little too much for these sensitive tissues. So let me know what you think. Leave me some comments. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.